The recently updated Samyang 85mm f1.4 Mark II promises to be smaller, lighter and faster than the original version. But the question is, is it smaller, lighter and faster than the much loved Sony 85mm f1.8 FE? Well today, we're going to find out. In terms of features, the Samyang includes a customizable AF lock button and a custom switch. By default, when setting this switch to mode 1, it'll allow the lens to function as you would expect, but switch it over to mode 2 and the focus ring will now allow you to adjust the aperture value instead. Further customization to this lens can be made using Samyang's lens dock, but this has to be purchased separately. In contrast, the Sony includes a customizable AF lock button and a traditional MF to AF switch. Both lenses include a dust and waterproof construction, though the Samyang is the only one to include further protection in the way of a rubber o-ring around the lens mount. The Sony lens is made from metal whilst the Samyang is predominantly made from plastic though despite this the Sony lens is still noticeably smaller and lighter. And this is likely due to it offering a smaller maximum aperture of f1.8 compared to f1.4 on the Samyang. Now although I don't personally mind plastic lenses this lens from Samyang in particular does feel slightly hollow compared to other Samyang lenses that I've tested on the channel and you definitely can feel that the majority of the weight is in the front of the lens where all of the heavier glass is. The Sony on the other hand feels solid as a rock and very nicely balanced in the hand. When shooting in manual focus mode, both lenses operate smoothly and neither lens has any noticeable delay. By default, the Samyang does have a slightly longer throw than the Sony, which means you do have to over-rotate your wrist to complete longer focus pulls. That said, if you do own a Samyang lens dock, you will be able to fine-tune the sensitivity of the focus ring if this is something that really bothers you. But anyway, when it comes to scoring, I think both lenses definitely deserve a point for both handling and build quality because they're both really nice lenses to work with. Now, I know what you're thinking, you're thinking, Tom, the Samyang is plastic. Clearly, it doesn't deserve a point for build quality, which I would argue that the Samyang does feel slightly less premium than the Sony, but the fact that it offers better weather sealing and further customization options, I think that kind of evens the playing field. But what do you think? Let me know in the comments below. When it comes to price, there's not a huge difference between the two. Although the Samyang is slightly more expensive, it's actually a very well-priced f1.4 lens, whilst the Sony is one of the more expensive f1.8 lenses currently available. So although the Sony deserves to pick up the only full point for price, I am going to award the Samyang half a point as it's still a great value for money option. But what happens if you don't have the money to buy these lenses? Well, good news because I might have a solution for you and it involves selling your photos and videos online using Wirestock, who coincidentally are the sponsors of today's video. Wirestock is a platform that allows you to upload and sell your photos and video on all of the major online marketplaces all in one place. That means no more having to spend hours uploading your files multiple times on each individual platform. Simply upload your files to Wirestock, select the platforms that you want to sell your content on, and Wirestock will even automatically fill in all of the metadata for you completely free of charge. After that, everything can be processed and monitored using a single account. Wirestock allows you to upload to all of the major players, including Shutterstock, Getty Images, iStock, Adobe, Alamy, and many, many more. And you can personally select which of the files are uploaded to which platforms, giving you complete control. The service is completely free to sign up and try out for yourself, and Wirestock only take commission on sales that you make, which is good news because it means that they only make money if you're making money. So if you're interested in giving this service a try, you can sign up to Wirestock today using the link in the video description below. And thank you once again to Wirestock for sponsoring this video. Anyway, back to the test. When it comes to autofocus in good lighting conditions, both lenses were quick to focus with no major signs of hunting. Although in low light conditions, both lenses slowed ever so slightly, they still managed to find the target and neither of them showed any significant signs of hunting. When shooting wide open in high speed continuous mode, the vast majority of the shots taken with these lenses were sharp and in focus, with only a handful being very marginally out of focus. So with both lenses putting in a pretty even performance, it's points all round. Switching over to video mode, and both of these lenses were able to track George as he walked towards the camera with no problems, even when shooting wide open. When repeating the test at a faster pace, again, both lenses put in a solid performance and were able to track George without any issues at all. As for AF noise, both of these lenses are completely silent.
When it comes to focus breathing, unfortunately, both of these lenses do suffer quite badly, so not ideal for videographers, I'm afraid. But focus breathing aside, it's otherwise a pretty faultless performance in this round, so it's points all round for these lenses. In our bokeh test, both lenses produced nice round orbs in the center that turn into cat's eye shapes towards the edges of the frame. Though obviously the Samyang does produce noticeably larger orbs thanks to its wider maximum aperture. In terms of general bokeh quality, the Samyang provides a much thicker and softer blur than the Sony, making it the better option if you're a self-confessed bokeh. Bokeholic. So this means that the Samyang clearly wins the point in this round. In our lens flare test, the Sony does a slightly better job of protecting against ghosting. However, if this type of thing really does bother you, both lenses do come included with lens hoods in the box to help shade the front elements in harsh lighting conditions. On a longitudinal chromatic aberration test, the Samyang creates green fringing at the top of the chart and a subtle magenta tint at the bottom, whilst the Sony displays strong yellow fringing above and blue fringing below the area of sharp focus. When shooting with these lenses out in the real world though, both lenses are capable of capturing fantastic portraits and I really didn't come across any handling issues while shooting with these lenses for the day. Neither lens exhibited any kind of colour cast so skin tones appear natural and true to life with no need for major tweaks in post-production. This is particularly important for the Samyang lens as the Mark 1 version of this 85mm lens was notorious for creating images with an orange tint. So it seems that Samyang have fixed this with the new iteration so high five goes to Samyang for that. High five! <laughs> I'm happy to say that both lenses provided me with a ton of sharp shots at the end of the shoot, so I was really spoilt for choice when it came to shortlisting my shots in Lightroom. Now for full transparency, I actually own the Sony lens that I'm testing in this video, and obviously the photos that you're seeing on screen now weren't all taken on the same day. Some of them have been taken from previous tests, but obviously I'm well versed with this lens and I know quite a lot of the pitfalls and the pros and cons. Now I mainly use this lens for video work as it's smaller and lighter than my main Sigma 85mm f1.4, I've mainly reserved for portrait photography. However, the biggest annoyance for me is that in scenarios where you have strong backlighting, it can produce a noticeable blue fringing or haloing effect around your subject, which really isn't ideal. And unfortunately, this also seems to be an issue with the Samyang lens too. And I noticed that throughout a number of my shots, I was getting a strong blue fringe in areas of high contrast. So it seems unfortunately, neither of these lenses are completely faultless. But how do they stand up in terms of sharpness? Well, when shooting wide open at each of the lenses respective maximum apertures, the Sony is the marginally sharper option than the Samyang, despite it showing some signs of blue fringing. At the corners this time, the Samyang offers the best edge-to-edge -edge sharpness of these two lenses, despite it now showing a touch of coloured fringing also. When shooting at the lens's minimum focusing distances, both lenses offer good levels of sharpness, but again, the Sony is very slightly sharper than the Samyang. So clearly you can see from these tests that both of these lenses do have their pros and their cons, but ultimately they are both solid performers when it comes to image quality, and they're I think they both deserve a point in this final round. So it looks like the new Samyang has just clinched the win in this head-to-head -head test, with its superior bokeh quality being the biggest point of difference between these two lenses. But if half a point isn't good enough for you and you're still undecided as to which lens you should go for, then to be honest, either option is a good option. You really can't go that far wrong with these two choices. I would say go for the Samyang if bokeh quality is a must for you. The Sony, on the other hand, is arguably the better option if you want to shoot as light as possible, and also the metal build may sway some people if you really do have a bugbear with plastic lenses. But in either case, if you are looking to purchase either of these two lenses, then I have provided links in the description below. Full disclaimer, they are affiliate links, so although you won't be charged any more for using them, I do personally receive a small kickback from Amazon for any purchases made using those links, which does actually go a long way to help supporting the channel. So thank you in advance for using them.